think it's just right at 7 o'clock. Actually, it's 7.02 according to my iPad, so uh, it's time to get started. I want to welcome those who are watching via live stream. We're going to have uh, uh, prayer requests and pray over that, and then we'll have our, our prayer time, and then we'll get into the Word. Um, so at this, at this time, uh, if you have a prayer request, we're going to make that known, and we will pray. And I put my pen down, and I probably need that to, to write with. Does anyone have any prayer requests you'd like to bring forth at this time? Um, Austin asked us to remember his aunt and uncle. His uncle is not expected to make it, so remember his aunt, Barbara. Anyone else? Yes. Okay. Anyone? Yes. Oh, I thought you had your hand up. Anyone else? Prayer requests? Uh, let's continue to pray for Brother Chuck and his family. Uh, many of you already know that uh, Sister Norma passed away on uh, um, this uh, last day or two. Um, the funeral will be, actually the memorial service will be here Saturday at 11. Saturday at 11 here at the church. It's going to be a memorial service. And so I want to invite you to come out and be a part of that and, and pray with the family and uh, continue to lift them up in your prayers. Also remember Brother David, um, he had a minor surgery uh, this, this, this today, so just remember him and his family and uh, remember Sarah. She's uh, gone to the doctor just for some precautionary things, so remember them. Uh, any other, does anyone else have a prayer request, a need? I'm going to ask you to stand. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, God. And we thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Your loving kindness is better than life, Lord. And Father, we pray for these needs and these requests that have been brought to you right now. We, we pray, God, for these families who are uh, suffering uh, loss and pain and uh, hurt and all the issues that life is bringing father but what we know that if we come to you god that you are the answer not that you have the answer you are the answer and lord we lift them up in the name of jesus christ and we ask that you would touch them and minister to them father god lord according to your word in the name of jesus christ and the church said amen, amen and amen you can be seated and we're going to go over our 2022 next level agreement. Uh, I do uh, want to give you an opportunity to worship in giving. Uh, you can bring tithe and offering uh, this, this evening. Anything that is undesignated as this is the uh, uh, second, I think this is the second Wednesday. This goes to uh, benevolence for funerals and things like that, helping folks out for food and things. So if you want to give, I'm going to ask you to do that. I do want to tell you that next Wednesday night we will not be having service here because we're having our uh, winter prayer conference they're calling it the Moore conference um, but uh, we're going to be in weatherford we want to invite you if you're able to drive over uh, and and join us for serve join with us in service it's uh, the entire state of texas and the church of god and so come over and be a part they're going to have some outstanding speakers every night it starts on wednesday night goes wednesday night thursday night and friday night um, so come over and be a part and participate in that. We will not be having service here. We will be putting that out on Facebook and on Instagram and all the other social medias. And we will be putting it out on our Remind. If you're part of the Remind app, and you get text. If you're part of the prayer chain, you're already on that. Um, but what this does is just allows us um, to, to, to have as many of our folks come over. And we usually have a good number drive over and be a part and participate so next wednesday night all ages um, we're asking you to bring them over there we won't be having any classes here yes i believe it's at seven but sometimes they start at six thirty, and i don't have it right here with me <laughs> so i'll let you know after service i've got it in my office um, but it's either six thirty or 7 um, you know, each night now third uh Thursday morning and Friday morning, they do have morning sessions. If you guys want to come over that, it's free of charge. They have some excellent Bible teachers typically 
uh, in the mornings. The mornings are not very uh, populated. That usually is just pastors and a few folks that live locally. Uh, but again, it's a 45-minute drive one way. If you have the time and can spend the money to in gas to get over there, I know gas is kind of high. I want to invite you to come over and be a part of the Moore Conference. Um, on Saturday, they're having an equip um, deal all from Saturday at 9 to uh, 1.45. doesn't go very late, not this Saturday, but the Saturday following that. If you want to go over and be a part of that, our church is actually paying for you to go. Um, as many of you want to, you can say you're from Walnut Creek Church. They have different tracks or different uh, things that you can go in and learn. They have youth, they have children, they have finance, uh, all these different things. So if you want to go and be a part of that, I know the staff will be there. All the staff will be there. And uh, there'll be some others that are going to be uh, there as well. So come out and be a part of those things. If you have your next level agreement, I'm going to ask you to get that out. Here's why I'm going to ask you to get it out, because it's a point of contact. If you don't have it with you, I'm going to ask you to go to the back of the sanctuary and pick out a card. And when you get that card, don't put it back in there. Just keep it. That way, if you have two, that's all right. You may have one at home. You may not have one at home, but get a card because I want you to put this in your hands and I want you to lay your hands on it as we pray for each of these uh, items. I want you to call them out. There's some more in the foyer if we don't have enough in here. But this is the Next Level Prayer Agreement 2022 for Walnut Creek Church. And uh, we're asking that you have a point of contact uh, as we pray these out, that you can pray them as well. And, and uh, so um, I want you to have those in your hand, and I want you to join with me in prayer. We're praying a prayer of agreement over these things. We take a little time to do this. We're asking those of you at home, if you have them, to, to, if you're watching, to, to pull your card out and pray your prayer of agreement together with us. Um, when Gina and I were talking, you know, we do, we do our Bible study, and I'm, doing, I'm reading along with the church. We do our 2022, 20, but we also do our own personal Bible studies that we have, and, and uh, we were having a discussion this morning about unity. And uh, uh, the Lord just, the Holy Spirit just dropped us something in my spirit. And I, and I just, and I'm not preaching or teaching on unity uh, today, but the Lord showed me something about unity. When there's disunity, when, when there's a lack of unity, betrayal happens. When a group is not united, someone is going to be betrayed. We see it in the 12 disciples with Judas, who was not in unity with the others. He didn't sell out to them, and he was betrayed. It's in the Old Testament. There was a, co a group of men that came up and said, We're just, we, hear, we can hear from God just as good as Moses and Aaron. And you know what? God judged them, and th they were betraying Aaron and Moses because they had been anointed and thought they... Yeah. It steps into a power of position, and they wanted to be the top dog. That doesn't work in the kingdom of God. We have to be unified. We have to walk together. We have to work together. It's necessary. So, you know, we, we want to be unified. We want to walk together. We, we want to do what God has for us to do. And that's why we're asking you to pray along with us. A prayer of unity. Because the Bible says a three-cord rope is not easily broken. If you and I can join together in the name of Jesus Christ, we can see great things done. Amen. All right, so we're going to pray this next level prayer agreement. Number one is that we're going to pray that WCC family would engage in next level vision, Philippians 3 and 14. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray, Father, for myself and for this body of believers at WCC, Lord, that we would engage in next level vision, Lord, of pressing toward the goal of the prize of the high calling, the upward call of God in Christ Jesus, Lord, that we would not be deterred, Lord, we would not be uh, uh, um, taken off track, we wouldn't be uh, confused about this, Lord, we would understand that you are calling us to the next level, you are calling us to a new level in you, Father. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, God, that if we will engage with you in your presence, in your spirit, in your word, God, Lord, that you will bring us up to that next level, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, because we know it's not done through our work or our efforts. It is done through our obedience and submission to you. 
And Father, we give you glory and honor and praise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord, that we would together move forward in your kingdom in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The next one we're praying for is the spirit of grace and supplication to, pray, to, bring, to bring repentance and revival to the hearts of of our WCC family, Zechariah 12, 10 through 12. Now you'll notice a lot of these are for the Walnut Creek Church family. The reason is, is because if we can get on the right, uh, we, if we can get in the right lane with God, if we can get in the right position with God, we can change the world. But we got to be in the right place with God. And that's why we just felt compelled for this. So for the spirit of grace and supplication, are you ready? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, as, outla outla as outlined in Zechariah 12, verses 10 through 12, Father God, I pray the spirit of grace and supplication to bring repentance and revival to the families at WC Walnut Creek Church. Lord, that we would submit ourselves to you, to your authority, to your spirit, and to your will, God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, that we would walk in submission to your desire. Lord God, that we would humble ourselves God, in a spirit of grace and repentance, Father, Lord, that you would bring revival. God, that you would bring, uh, uh, Lord, a move of your spirit and your presence into our midst. Father, that we could be, Lord, what you want us to be in this world, to represent you, God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The next one is for lost souls. Turn to your neighbor and say, we need to win the lost. We need to win the lost. Lost souls to be out of the kingdom. John 3 and 17. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. How many believe Jesus came to save the world? So many of us Christians think he only came to save us. He came to save the world. And we're to reach the world as best we can. Our world. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for lost souls to be one to your kingdom. God, not just other churches and other ministries, but God, through us as well, that we would bring the message of the cross of Jesus Christ to those who were in need, that they would hear and repent and receive, and those lost souls would be added to your kingdom. Father God, not for our glory, but for your glory, God. Lord, that you would allow us to be a part of that. Lord, anoint soul winners in this place. God, evangelists, God, to, to go out into their, their fields, God, that they work in and, and that they're, they're living and abiding in, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, to lead people, to win lost souls to you. Lord, we just thank you. Lord, we praise you. I pray for a, a soul-winning anointing upon this body of believers, God. Lord, a fire shut up in our bones. God, that must, that must emerge, that must come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Next, we, we're praying for believers to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Acts 2 and 17. It is imperative that people are, are not just, uh, salvation gets you to heaven. There's, I'm not down in salvation. I'm going to tell you, the, the season we're living in, we're living in, I would not want to try to live without the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I would not want to try it. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, I pray, God, that you would just pour out your Spirit upon all flesh according to your word. Lord, we know that it has literally been poured out in Acts chapter 2, but God, Lord, let that fountain flow. God, from this, uh, this church and this people, God, from the message going forth, that there would be those who are baptized in the Holy Spirit, Father. Not a few, but many, God. Lord God, an outpouring of your Spirit in this last day, according to your word, in the name of Jesus Christ. Next, we're praying for workers to enter into the harvest. We need people to help us in the harvest. If you look at this world we're living in, the harvest is great, but the laborers are few. There's a great harvest right here in our city, right here in your neighborhoods. There's an awesome harvest. And we're standing and watching those fields, and time's running out. Time's running out. So we're praying for workers to enter the harvest. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we agree together 
Lord God, that we, are, that we would enter the harvest, God, as we've never entered before. Lord, that we would, that we would rise up from our weariness, God. And we would enter into the harvest recognizing that this call of, uh, of going into the harvest, going into the fields and laboring in your fields until the sun goes down, until it's too late and time has passed. Don't let us be found not working in the field, Father. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray for workers from this church. And Lord, that you would send them into this church as well. God, that we could join together and win a great harvest for you, to reap a harvest for your kingdom in Jesus' name. And next is we pray for church leaders to have wisdom to know what to do in, in the season that we are living, First Chronicles 12 and 32. Father, we pray for our, our spiritual leadership, those who are over us. God, that they might know the direction and, the, and the, the, where we are going and what we should be doing, Lord, in your kingdom in this time, in this period, in this season. Father God, in the name of Jesus, give us wisdom. Your word says if we, if we lack wisdom, we can ask for wisdom and you'll give it liberally. Lord, we not only ask this wisdom for ourselves, but Lord, we pray for spiritual wisdom and understanding for our leaders, God. Lord, that they would have an understanding and revelation of the days and the seasons and times. Lord, that we would not be caught unaware of what's taking place in this moment, in this day. Lord, we, just, we, we, we love you and we praise you. We put our faith and our trust in you in this season. Next, we're praying that we at WCC would abide in him and his words abide in us. John 15 and 7. Now, the reason we put this on here is because you understand if you, Jesus said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you can ask whatever you will and it'll be done. Amen. Amen. That verse scares people. One, because they're, they're not sure about what they're going to ask. And number two, they're afraid it won't happen. But I'm going to tell you, if you do the first part, the second part comes naturally. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you can ask whatever you will and it'll be done. Are you ready to pray for that? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we're simply praying your word. We're agreeing on your word. And your word is faithful and your word is true. You're, you, you tell us, let every man be a liar, but God be true. Because you're not a man that you should lie. Lord, you, you're incapable, Lord, of telling a lie. The, the, the father of lies is Satan, and he's the one that's lying to us today. But Lord, help us to abide in you and your words to abide in us in this season, in this time, God. Lord, so that we can stand strong and speak forth loud in the name of Jesus Christ, your word. Mm. In Jesus' name. The next one is that we here at WCC would grow spiritually, physically, numerically, and financially. 3 John 1, verse 2. I don't think it's wrong to pray for that. I pray that you grow physically, spiritually, numerically, and financially. It's time. It's time. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, you, you have put into play, God, spiritual principles and Lord, we speak them forth in the name of Jesus Christ. Not just financial, but physical and spiritual and numerically, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that this church and the families of this church, God, would, would be blessed to overflowing. God, we are thankful for what you have done. But Father God, we're moving into a time period that is crucial and we need to be able to move God, as you call us to move and to do as you have called us to do, Father. Lord, and we need numbers and we need uh, finances and we need spiritual growth in the name of Jesus Christ in our church and in our families, Father. And Lord, we pray, them, pray for them in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, that you would bring them to pass in Jesus' name. Last one is that we would worship him in spirit and in truth. John 4, 23 and 24. And we included this one because I think it's important to remain humble and recognize that any one of us could go off the path at any, any given moment if we're not careful. We could go astray if we're not careful. And that's why we put this in here. That we would worship him in spirit and in truth. 
that we would remain grounded in him. And I want you to make it personal for you right here and right now as we pray this. I want you to, if you will, just say, Lord, help me to, to worship in spirit and truth and in truth, Father. Help me and help my family and then help Walnut Creek Church. But I want you to make sure you pray for yourself in this fashion. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, I pray, God, Lord, that I would be a worshiper of you that is a worshiper in spirit and in truth. Lord, I, want, I don't want to be hypocritical. I don't want to be half-hearted. God, I don't want to just give a little bit of an effort. I want to worship in spirit and in truth beyond my emotion, beyond my circumstance or my situation, beyond what's taking place around me and other people. God, I want to know that you are God and that I worship you in spirit and in truth. And I pray, God, for, for my fellow believers in this place and us that are a part of this fellowship. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, that we would worship you in spirit and in truth. In the name of Jesus Christ, God, that you would be glorified and honored and blessed in his holy name by the actions that we take that we take and partake of, God, in your name, that we would bring you glory and honor and praise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And the church said, Amen. 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 All right. If you have your Bibles, we're going to spend the next few minutes Talking about the right equipment. Turn to somebody and say, do you have the right equipment? Say it again. Do you have the right equipment? Have you ever tried to do a job and not have the right equipment? I have. I learned real quick that, that it's a whole lot easier if you have the right tools to do the job that you're trying to do. In fact, you don't want to try to dig a hole with a rake. You ever tried to do that? It don't work very good. It, it, it doesn't. You, you can't even dig a very good hole, not a deep one, with a hoe. Because they weren't designed to dig a deep hole. If you want to dig a deep hole, you need a certain type of tool. Now, if I, if I, if I at my age want to dig a deep hole, I'm going to tell you what kind of tool I need. I need a tool called a backhoe. Because I can do it with a shovel, but I'd rather not. And it's going to take longer, and I'm going to hurt worse. So, uh, you know, you need to have the right tool. And we have been given tools. We have been equipped with tools by our Father and our King um, to do the job that He's called us to do. And we all have a job. Turn to your neighbor and say, you have a job. You need to be doing it. Go ahead, tell them that too. You need to be doing it. You have a job. You need to be doing it. We all, we all have a job in the kingdom of God. Hebrews 13 and verse 20 says, Now may the God of peace who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, verse 21, make you complete in every good work to do his will, his will excuse me, working in you what is well-pleasing in his sight through jesus christ to whom be glory forever and ever amen i'm going to ask you to bow your head and we're going to play over, pray over his word and then we'll get started in the class tonight father we thank you and we praise you for your goodness and your mercy for your loving kindness and lord we ask that you would open our hearts and our ears to hear what you are speaking to us today we pray in the name of jesus christ lord that you would be glorified in all that we do and all that we are I pray, Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, that you would be exalted, Lord, that we would receive the seed of your word and it would, produce, it would take root in our heart and produce fruit that would glorify and honor you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and the church said, amen, amen. amen. So Hebrews 13, 20 through 21 says, now may the God of peace who brought up our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, now this is really an introduction uh, just talking about Jesus and God through the blood of the everlasting covenant. Verse 21 is really the one where we're, we're focusing on. It says, make you complete. Now, now, how many of you like to be complete? You ever felt like you had pieces missing? Like something was missing in your life, something was missing in your personality, something that was missing. I've, I've felt like that at, at many times. 
but make you complete in every good work to do His will. Now, this is what he says. He says, to make you complete in every good work to do His will. So the will of the Father is doing good works. That's the will of the Father. That's not the work of salvation. That is simply results of doing the will of the Father after you know Him as your Lord and Savior, okay? We're not saved by works. We're saved by grace. But if we're going to be complete in every good work to do His will, it's, He goes on to say, working in you what is well-pleasing in His sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. So if you and I are going to be successful in this spiritual endeavor, we must realize the tools or what God has equipped us with, what we have been given by God to do the job that He has called us to do. What we have been given by God to, to complete the good work that He has placed us here to complete so that He would be glorified. That's what it says. Okay? So, now, and, and I'm, not, I'm not talking about anybody in here, and I'm not pointing fingers in here, but I want to tell you, the average churchgoer does nothing in the church. The average churchgoer shows up, walks in, sits down, gets up when it's over, and leaves. It's the average churchgoer. The, across this nation, that's the average Christian, if you want to call them Christian or churchgoer. 10% of most congregations, 10% do the work. And 90% sit on a pew or a seat. Again, I'm not throwing stones. I'm just, I'm just giving statistics that have been proven and been for many years the same. In fact, they've actually gotten a little worse in recent studies because of what we've been going through. Aren't you tired of what we've been going through? I'm sick and tired of that. And, well, I, I'm not going to get on that soapbox right now. Because it would take over the class. So let's talk about your equipment. Turn to somebody and say, you're fixing to get the right equipment. You're fixing to get the right equipment. Okay, so the worker's equipment, number one, your number one tool that you need to have in your toolbox when my sons and my daughter became old enough to drive, as a father, I did something that I thought was important to them. I got them each a toolbox. And I put a few tools in the tools. I didn't, I, I didn't give them the best tools, but I gave, I gave them the tools that were adequate for their level of experience. They all got a, a hammer. They all got a claw hammer. They all got a set of either one or two or three standard screwdrivers. And they each got a set of one or two or three of Phillips head screwdrivers. Now, for those of you who are, are not really up on what those terms mean, a standard is the one that's flat across. It's the minus. And the Phillips head is the plus, okay, or the star or whatever you want to call it. And, and so they each got one of those, and they got a, some cheap play, pair of pliers, okay? And I would put it in their trunk, and my son said, what did you do, that, what, what's this for? If you ever get broke down, and you ever feel like any, because I tried to teach them some things. It, it's diff, it was different in their day than, or, than it was in mine, because in my day, there was no Google you could say, show me a YouTube video of how to fix my car. You know, you either knew how because your, your parent or a neighbor or someone had, had showed you what to do or, or you waited on AAA. Okay? Now, we're, we're in a different age now. So when Zoe started going to school and she started driving and she started talking about going to school off and she went for a few years off, I did something. I gave her a new tool. Because while she's got a tool chest, a chest, a little toolbox in her, her vehicle, uh, I don't know that she's ever used it for any hazard or situation on the road. But I do know that she has used this other tool that I gave her. I started uh, in our insurance. I got roadside assistance. And if she locked her key in the car, which she has done, away from me or if she had a flat or if there was something going on she could punch in a number and they would come and they would assist her and that's a tool it's an effective tool so these are tools 
that we need to have that we need to know how to use, okay? Number one is authority. You have, there is one authority, and you have been given authority by that one authority. Our authority is the Word of God, 2 Timothy 4 and 2. Now, you, before you get a little bit out of shape with that statement, our authority is the Word of God, you understand that the Bible says that Jesus was the Word made flesh. And so He was the living Word of God, right? And so when we speak in the name of Jesus Christ, we are speaking the authority of the living Word of God. He told His disciples, go and preach the gospel, heal the sick, cast out devils. He told them to do those things in His name. You are a disciple of Jesus Christ if you belong to Him and follow Him. And so there is one authority, and that's the Word of God. 2 Timothy 4 and 2 says, preach the Word. Be, and this, I know that he, t, Paul is pre, talking to a minister, but I want to tell you, every one of us ought to be preaching the Word in some form, in some fashion with our life. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort, and with all long suffering and teaching. I don't know if you understand in season and out of season. I grew up in the Paris Church of God. Most of my time there, we had, I had three pastors while I was there, three lead pastors. The first one was Terrell Taylor. We came in under his ministry. Some of you remember him, know him. He left and Brother Charles Prince came and he was there for a couple of years. He left and Brother O.D. Robertson came and he was there for 20 years. Brother O.D. was the one who Gene and I grew up under, really got, got we, he performed our wedding we knew them. When we were felt called to ministry, he was the one I went to and talked to, visited with. We wanted, when we went out in ministry, you know, uh, he, 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 whenever we'd come back, you know, he's very kind, in season and out of season. Uh, Brother O.D. was, and I, I'm not saying this in a bad way, he was, he was a little different. He, he was a little different. He, he uh, wasn't bad, he was just, he was a little different. And uh, we were youth pastoring in, in Monroe, Louisiana, and Gina and the kids had gone. I'd taken them at the beginning of the week and dropped them off to see her mom and dad and the kids could visit with their grandparents. And I went back and had to work in Monroe, and I was by myself for a week, and it was miserable. But that Sunday, we had Sunday morning service. This was back when you had Sunday night service. And we had two Sunday morning services, and then we had a Sunday night service in Monroe. We were, we were growing that much, and it was, everything was booming. But they had, for whatever reason... It was a special day, and so they had called off Sunday night service. And so I told Gina, I said, I will come get you on, uh, there was, I think there was a holiday on Monday. I said, I will come up there and, on Sunday, and I will uh, spend the night, and then we'll leave late Monday and come home because I had to be at work on Tuesday. And so I jumped in the car, grabbed a hamburger on the road, and four and a half hours I drove from uh, Monroe to Paris. I got to Paris. I pulled into Paris because we had two service, Sunday morning services. When I say I left, it wasn't at 12 noon. It was more like 1.30 or 2 because we had to shut down and do all our staff stuff before we got to leave. I walked into the Paris Church of God. I drove in. They, it, it was 10 minutes to 6. The service started at 6 there in Paris. 10 minutes to 6, I walked in. I still had on my suit because I didn't have time to go home and change. I had a bag packed. I walked in. I looked like I'd been on the road. I was hot. I was tired. I was looking for Gina because I hadn't seen her for a week. Brother O.D. walks up the, the aisle and he sticks his hand out. I said, hey, Brother Robertson, how are you? He said, I'm great. I think you need to preach tonight. He said, they'd much rather hear you than they'd rather like to, than to hear me. I said, I, I didn't have my Bible. I left my Bible in the, in the car. He said, here, you can use mine. I was like, no, 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 no. I, now I'm talking about being instant in season. The thing was, the whole ride, normally I would 
back then we didn't have Sirius XM and you'd have to find a radio station within your range and drive through and you'd listen to hear. So you listen to whatever was on. But that day as I was trying to find good stations and listen, the Holy Spirit said, shut it off. I just shut it off and he just started pouring this message. And I mean, I didn't have a Bible. I wasn't looking at a Bible. It was with me because I just left church. But I, I, it, it wasn't, I wasn't looking it up. He was giving me scriptures and things to say. And I thought, man, this is going to be a good sermon. I'm going to write it down and I'm going to preach this the next time I get an opportunity to preach. I didn't know it was going to be in a few hours. But I understood that he knew. I'm normally someone who likes to have it, at least notes written down, if not here on paper. But I had nothing except the text and a memory and the Holy Spirit. I had told God when I started in the ministry, I said, I will, I will never turn down an opportunity to stand up and speak for you. And so I was afraid to say no. I, I just drove four and a half hours. So I got up and preached. I don't know if it was good or bad. I can't even remember what the message was. I hope someone does, but I know this. When you feel like you're out of season, that might be the particular season God is testing you to see if you're going to be obedient, to see if you're going to do. You have the authority whether you are in the pulpit that God has placed you or whether you're on the side of the road ministering to somebody you need to be instant in season and out of season because you have been given authority acts chapter 10 verse 44 and here's what's very important that you and i need to know you, if if you're in a fight with the devil it's too late you should have already picked up your bible you should have been reading it back here preparing for the battle if you don't know how to fight the battle when you get to the battle, it's because there's been no preparation. One of the reasons we're doing this 2022 and we're asking you to read with us 20 minutes a day, 22 minutes a day, I truly believe the battle's going to get hotter. It's going to become more fierce. And listen, you need to know, you need to know what the Word of God says so you can pull it out and use it against your adversary. Pastor John Osteen, before he passed away, used to tell his wife, Do Dodie, said, you need to consume the Word because you will never know when you need it. And if you wait until you need it, it's too late. And she faced, if you've never heard her testimony, she faced a, a death sentence cancer diagnosis. You know what she started doing? Her and her husband and her kids, they started quoting the word over their situation. Because you got to know, you got to know whose authority you stand in. If you're trying to stand in your own personality, in your own ability, in your own authority, he will run right over you. But if you're standing in the name of Jesus Christ, if you're standing on the word, he cannot, he cannot. He cannot usurp the word of the living God. He can't. Acts chapter 10 verse 44 says, While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell on all those who heard the word. There's one authority and that's the word of God. This is at the house of Cornelius. Peter didn't want to go. He didn't want to preach to these people. But while he was speaking preaching the word of god you know what happened the holy spirit said you know what i'm just going to anoint these people right here in spite of you peter because you're preaching the word it, it, it astonished peter and the men who came with him they they couldn't understand it they couldn't believe it these weren't jews these were gentiles they were part of the heathen and here god was pouring out his spirit on them and, and peter said we we can't prevent them from being baptized <laughs> they got the same thing we do you see there's one authority and that's what the word of god says it's not what about it's not about what i think or what you think or what anybody else thinks it's not about what the president or the vice president or congress or the supreme court or any other government in this world thinks it is about what thus saith god almighty 
That's the one authority. The next piece of equipment is the one resource. There's one resource. I'm going way back, but when we were in school, we had a resource teacher. Remember those resource teachers? They, they, they had whatever you needed, they had it. They'd, they'd bring it around. They'd, they'd help you with it. They were, they, whatever resources you needed. And, and I want to tell you, the Spirit is our source and supply, the Holy Spirit. When we are endued with power from on high, then we are effective because He is effective. Luke 24 and 49, Jesus says, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you're endued with power from on high. Acts chapter 2 and verse 4, He says, And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. First Peter 1 and 12 says, to, to them it was revealed, not to themselves, but to us, they were ministering the things which now have been reported to you through those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. Things which angels desire to look into. There's one resource. And that one resource is the Holy Spirit. There's, uh, one authority is the Word. One resource is the Holy Spirit. Now, if you're looking for that to work out theologically, I'm going to tell you how it works out. Jesus Christ was the Word. He's the authority. The Holy Spirit is the one who fulfills the work of Christ in the life of a believer. You understand? One's not greater than the other. But Jesus said, he'll speak of me and mine. When he comes, the Holy Spirit comes, he's going to speak of me. The Holy Spirit's purpose and job here is to empower you and I so that we can be a witness for Christ and to convict those who don't know Him into a place of accepting Him if they will. He's the Spirit of truth. Jesus said He'll lead you into all truth. What did Jesus say about the truth? He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Holy Spirit leads us in the way of Jesus Christ. He's the resource. Jesus is the authority. The Word is the authority. The Spirit is the resource. The next tool in your bag is inspiration. Inspiration. You know what inspiration is? Well, we're in the month of February, so it's not real hard. It's love. 2 Corinthians 5 and 14 says, For the love of Christ compels us. The love of Christ compels us because we judge thus that if one died for all, then all died. One person put it like this, when we are melted and moved by his love, we move and melt others toward his love. You see, here on earth we deal with, with a, really a carnal love. The, the love between, and we talked about it yesterday a little bit on our prime timers meeting, but we, you know, we deal with eros love, which is, which is a love between a, a man and a woman, a romantic type of love. There's, there's the Philadelphia, which is a brotherly love, which there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of today. But God deals with a different type of love. It's the agape love. It's a love that you and I really can't comprehend. Even if we think we do, we don't. Because without, with, without anything coming back, the Bible says that He loved us in this while we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. This was the display of God's love. So, there's one inspiration. I, I remember a, a story back when I was a kid. And the story was a conversation between the sun and the, the north wind. And there was a gentleman walking down the, the way and the wind looked at the sun and said, 
He had a, he had a coat on. And the wind said, I bet you I can get him to take that coat off quicker than you can. And the sun said, no. And the wind said, I will blow it right off of him. You don't know the, the force of my gale and the power with which I can blow. And the sun looked at him and says, I'll take that bet. And the wind billowed up and began to blow and blow and blow. And you, this, in the story, the man hunkered down more and more and wrapped his tight coat and uh, t- his coat tighter and tighter and wrapped himself up and tied his belt on his jacket or coat and, and, and got he just stopped the moving but the coat didn't come off the wind blew and blew and blew and finally the sun said hey it's my turn now and the wind said well while I catch my breath you go ahead and the sun stepped forward and just began to shine and in a moment gentleman undid his belt unbuttoned his jacket and opened it up in just a few more moments he he took his jacket off and laid it to the side in just a few more moments the man was laying on the grass enjoying the beautiful sunshine and the wind looked at the sun and said how did you do that and the sun said Instead of trying to force myself upon him, I enveloped him with my goodness and who I am. And I remember that from from childhood. That's to me, demonstrates the love of God. The enemy is trying to force us to do things and and this sinful world, but God is there and just he wants to envelop us in his love. And this one inspiration, the love of God, if we will just allow him to bathe us in his love, and that will allow his love not only to touch our life, but his love through us to touch other lives. It's our inspiration. Inspir- to be inspired means to do something because of something else. If you're inspired by our song or by uh, some famous person to do something, that's that's all well and good. There's nothing with that. But our greatest inspiration as believers is the love that God had for us. It's one inspiration. The next is this. There's one aim. These are tools. One aim. You know what it means to have an aim? When you think about it, where I go naturally in my mind, not that you need to get into the depths of my mind, but when I think about aim, I think about handling firearms because if you aim them wrong, they can be very dangerous. And if you aim them right, they can be very useful. And I remember, and I'm going to tell them myself, not in a good way. I remember my father-in-law had a, a shotgun he had just got, and Aaron, Aaron was a teenager. And uh, we were out in the back, in, uh, the back of their place, and they had a lot of room. And my father-in-law said, here, take that gun. He gave me the shotgun, and he stood over here, and he had a tin bucket about this big around, about this deep. And he threw it up, and I just threw it up and went boom the can just flipped over and fell to the ground and they said you missed it how did you miss it with a shotgun I said well I know I hit it I just didn't hit it full on sure enough I hit it with one BB yeah that's pretty bad one BB and so my father-in-law says Aaron you try it he said, no, I don't want to try it. You try it, Aaron. No, I don't want to try it. You try it, Aaron. I said, Aaron, go ahead and try it. So my father-in-law got back out there, and he threw that bucket up. And my son goes, boom. He blew the bottom out of the bucket. I don't know if he missed with one BB. But he just kind of looked at me and laughed. I said, that's okay. That's all right. It really wasn't. It was killing me inside. 
you see, if your aim's off, you're going to miss. I'm going to tell you, I believe the church's aim has been off for many years. We have one aim. I'm going to tell you what it is. And it may not be what you think it is. You might be thinking, I'm going to say, it, 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 it's to win the lost. You might be thinking that, but I'm going to tell you what our aim is, and this is part of your equipment. It's to be well-pleasing unto the Lord. That's our aim. How we do that, accomplish that, maybe in different ways. 2 Corinthians 5 and 9 says, Therefore we, take our, we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well-pleasing to Him. What Paul was saying is this, Wherever I am and whatever I'm doing, I want him, him to be pleased with it. If I am eating at, at Jason's Deli uh, for lunch, I want my actions and my life and what I say and what I do to be well-pleasing to Him. Now, we might not think that when we go to lunch, but the truth is, we're His witness out there. Are we being well-pleasing to Him? When we drive down the road, when we're in Walmart, when we're getting frustrated with the, the, the cashier who's uh, moving at the speed of molasses in January. I mean, we live in frustrating situations all the time, but is our aim on target as believers? Are we being well-pleasing to Him? See, when the attitude of our heart is right with the Lord, we will aim to please Him, not ourselves, not other people, not to accommodate our fleshly desires or aggravations. The next tool is one principle. There's one principle. That principle is serving the Lord. Romans 12 and 11 says, Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love and honor, giving preference to one another, not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, and acting in Him so that our service can never be in vain. 1 Corinthians 15, 5 and 8 says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And so there's one principle, and that principle is that we should be serving Him. We should be serving Him principle of my life not because I'm a preacher because I'm a Christian is that I serve him now how I do that may be different than, than the way you do that because the Bible says that we all work out our own salvation with fear and trembling and our, all of our service is different you, you don't have the same service to the king that I do you know in the kingdom uh, we we don't have a lot of uh, we don't have a lot of experience with kings as as a people we we really don't we don't deal with royalty in fact we kind of like thumb our nose at royalty in this world cuz we broke free of that oppression back in 1778 79 we started in 76 but we actually did it a few years later about 4 or 5 years later i think it is But here's the thing. We do serve a king. And there is a code with the king. There are things that you do and you don't do. And if we would understand what, what a king requires us, there are some people who bear the cup and bring it to the king. There are other people that hold the door open for him. There's other people who guard the door. There's other people that do this and that and this and that. And so what we do, how we serve the king, may be in different ways, but they're all important. And so we need to find, where, do we, where am I supposed to be serving the king? Not where, not where the preacher wants you to serve him, and not where the church necessarily... You need to find what his calling and position is for you, and then fulfill it within the church as a part of the body. We have one principle, and that's serving the Lord. I'm here to serve the Lord. There's one condition. This condition is what Jesus gave to the disciples. Now I want you to hear this, because this is a condition. The condition of following Jesus is found in Matthew. The 
where he says, he calls them, he says, then he said to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. So the condition is this, to follow Jesus and to allow him to turn you into a fisherman. Not for fish, but for men. Now, I just want to tell you, in, in the real world, right here and now, there are some people who are fishermen, and there are others who play at fishing. Okay? I'm not a real fisherman. Do I know how to fish? Yes, I do. But I don't look for every opportunity to go fish. I don't live for fishing. I'm talking about literally fishing. I don't live for it. <clears throat> I only enjoy fishing if they're biting. I like to catch fish, exactly. Now, I've got a friend who lives in East Texas. He's a real fisherman. I mean, if he has free time, he's fishing. And he has other hobbies and things he likes to do, but he really likes to fish. I like for him to fish because sometimes he'll invite me over to his house and let me eat some of his fish that he caught. I like that more than I do catching them. See, he's a real fisherman. He, he knows. There's another young man that I know. He's not young anymore. He's, he's close to my age, but he, he started as a young man. Uh, and he, he's a real fisherman. In fact, he, he's from Paris, and he fished in, some of you may know what this is, some of you may not, but he fished in the Bass Master Classic. He was that good a fisherman. He had sponsors. He had a boat that was purchased for him by sponsors or given to him. He could tell you he had tackle boxes like this full of all the different things. And he could tell you at whatever lake he was fishing, whatever the weather conditions were and whatever the lake conditions are, because, again, if you're not a fisherman, you don't know this. But the lake isn't the same every day. Some days the water's muddy and murky. Some days it's clear. Sunny days, you know, the fish can see you. Under the water, you're standing in the boat. They can see your shadow. They can see you. You can scare them off. He could tell you what bait to use. He could tell you the weight of the line that he had and the weight of the uh, the uh, uh, lure that he was using he could tell you how many seconds it took to hit the bottom of the he could tell you how deep it was and he could tell you how many how much time it took to hit the bottom and he could tell you how much time that it should take for that bass to hit that lure he was that good but he was trying to make a living out of it i wish we had some fishers of men like that So I'm myself just as well as you. We aren't, we, aren't, we aren't as deeply entrenched in following Jesus and allowing him to make us fishers of men. But that's a condition of following Jesus, of any disciple, to fish for men. To lure them to the place of knowing Jesus Christ. The last tool is this. There is one end for everything we do, for every tool that we use. All these tools, there's one end, one purpose, if you will. And that is the glory of God. It's the glory of God. That is our number one purpose for existing. To recognize there's one end to my life, and that is to glorify God with it. In everything that I do, I am to bring him glory. 2 Corinthians 1, verse 20 through 23 says, For all the promises of God in him are yes and in him, amen, to the glory of God through us. Did you hear that? We like that first part. All the promises of God uh, in Christ Jesus are yes and amen. But it follows it with to the glory of God through us. Verse 21, now he who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us is God, who, is also, who also has sealed us and given us the Spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. Moreover, I call God as witness against my soul that to you I came no more to Corinth. Now, 
we must realize and understand that my life exists, your life exists to glorify and honor God. That's the reason you're here. Is your life bringing Him glory? The things that you do, do they, does it glorify God? Is it glorifying God? I'm not, I'm not trying to condemn you. I'm just asking the question. I'm posing it to you. I'm posing it to myself. Do we bring the Father glory with our life? I'm going to ask you to stand. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, we ask, God, Lord, you would help us to bring you glory. Because most of us, Father, really don't know how. We really don't understand. Lord, I pray that you would just give us insight and understanding and revelation. God, of how to glorify you with our life. How to bear fruit to bring you much glory. We ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And the church said, Amen. 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 God bless you. We love you. Ladies, don't forget the, the Arise event on Friday. I know you want to be here. Uh, Saturday at 11, the memorial for Sister Norma uh, McCurdy. Don't forget that. Uh, church Sunday and no service next Wednesday night here. We'll be in Weatherford. We want you to come over and join us. I will let you know 6.30 or 7 on Sunday. Uh, what time that <coughs> I'll let you know for sure on Sunday. Okay. We'll announce it again. God bless you and go with God.